I used to always make the argument, hey, man, the more progressives, the merrier, right? Because, like, believe in democracy, of course, as a matter of principle, so the more good options, the better. But as I've gotten older, the math side of my brain has been more aggressive, where it's like, well, hold on, but that doesn't make sense. If you want to win, you need to be unified behind a candidate. And so... Marianne Williamson got into the race first. She's got politics that are very similar to mine. I have 90%, maybe 95% agreement with her. So ideally, I wish there's one progressive up against Biden, and then progressives can unify behind that progressive to give us the best chance of winning, right? But if it wasn't Marianne Williamson running against Biden, well, then it would have been best case scenario, not only for Cornell West, but for the movement if he had gotten in first and then it was him against Biden in a Democratic primary. Why do I say that? Because that's where he'd be able to make the most noise. That's where he'd be able to get taken the most seriously. That's where his numbers would be the highest. That's where the message would spread furthest and widest. That's where all the party infrastructure is. That's the way Americans are accustomed to voting in a two-party system when we don't have ranked choice voting and we have first past the post voting. They say all the time, oh, yeah, maybe we'll vote for an independent this time. <laughs> it's always either the, the Democrat or the Republican, right? So for him to make the most noise and be the most relevant and get the furthest and change things the most, I think he would have had to run as a Democrat. And I think he would have had to be the first one in, right? It's not the case. It's not the direction he went. So now we have a great option. Marianne Williamson in the primary, that's great. And then, like I said, if you get to the general election and you're in a swing state and you want to do a protest vote, well, at least now you have what will likely be a Green Party uh, candidate who's a solid candidate and is for many of the right things. Like I said, I probably have 90 to 95 percent agreement with him as well <laughs> with his politics. So anyway, there's your breakdown of it. Um, it's a positive thing that he adjusted course because this is certainly more serious. I use that term loosely because of my general issues with third-party stuff, but it's certainly more serious than what it was before. Uh, once again, here we are seeing the smears towards Dr. Cornell West and third parties, and I've heard this since 2016, and it's rather getting old. Uh, once again, Kyle is going to bat for Marianne Williamson, whom, again, uh, shout out to all of us and even our viewing audience. Each of us have brought the fact that there's a huge conflict of interest, especially when you have one presidential candidate who's still in the Democratic primary who officiated at your wedding. I know, Keaton, you did it eloquently as you uh, tore apart that whole entire controversy. So uh, once again, welcome to the five man hit squad, hard lens media, do dissidents, revolutionary blackout network. You got it. You want it. Here it is. Yeah. We were thinking about covering that last night, but we thought the pasta interview was more relevant, but man, mm. uh, that's just gold. I mean, that's just comedy gold. <laughs> that segment. I love how he starts out as I've gotten older, Matt, <laughs> as you've gotten older, you're fucking 34. As you've gotten older, fucking Ralph got Waldo more, Emerson uh, over there. As, as I've gotten Richard. older in my, in my old age, now, I, I've come to appreciate as, as the math part of my more. brain saw that I was stuck <laughs> at under yeah. a million subscribers. <laughs> subscribers uh, and i said i've probably sucked in everyone who wants to watch a bowl of warm oatmeal opine on politics so where can i get other people marianne she has a fan base i can draw on her fan base she's friends with oprah the math part of my brain is telling me that'll get me over a million subs and hey it worked it I mean, it's just me. in such defiance of reality. Oh, he'd make the biggest impact running as a Democrat. When's the last time Marianne Williamson was in a mainstream news story? Like, at this point, Fox exactly. News brings exactly. her on every week and a half as a gag, right? Yeah. And she'll right. go on Hannity as, as a gag. <laughs> That's it. I mean, when's the, when's the last time anybody cared about Marianne? It's over. That's it. It's done. It's done. She had, what, three yeah. weeks in the sun? Uh, That's hang it. on, but she got in first, though. She got in first. Yeah, yeah that's she, true. she, got, in she first. got in first. And what first of all, she showed who she truly was during her interview with RBN and then mm -hmm. with uh, Marcel Dixon, in which she systematically went back and forth with a potential supporter just trying to bring up the ideas of reparations. <laughs> and she tried and she and she starts verbally yelling at him. And I I I talked about it. I even interviewed You don't know. Yeah, exactly. She, she, she starts went, going she back went, and forth she went and charges mommy. at him. 
that that was she she was recreating Faye Dunaway's performance of Mommy Dearest there. Oh, very it's, true. Again, it's clown it's clown it's stuff through and through. It's unbelievable how Kyle has no self awareness because he the argument that we made against Kyle is that he obviously uh, sold out. Uh, he not serious for the workers because he married Crystal Ball. He became a millionaire, so he completely disconnected from the working class. So what he says is. I got an older. So as I got more older, now we advocate against third parties. But what, what they don't tell you, what Kyle Kalinske is not telling you, which and I know he's doing it on purpose because he found it just as Democrats. Just as Democrats in their plan originally was to promote third parties. Kyle Kalinske used to talk about third parties. Then he became a millionaire. Then he became part of the Breaking Points Club. He became comfortable. So he said, as I got older. And that was the myth I heard growing up when people say uh, usually people get more conservative as they get older. No, what happened was the baby boomers got comfortable uh, in, in old America. Usually people get older. They get a mortgage. They get some sort of success and they get generally more uh, conservative. But in our generation has been completely flipped in previous revolutionary generations like the generation that started the labor movement. Those those people didn't become more conservative. They, they became more radical. The civil rights activists became more radical became, because things were getting dire. And that's the same thing that happened to our to our generation and Gen Z, where we're not having upward mobility. So we're not doing this thing where we like, Kyle, like, man, I used to be radical, but I got older. No, as I get older, I'm more like, burn this shit down. As that's I get an, older, that's an the more I'm like, point. fuck the Democratic Party. As I get Agreed. older, the more I said we need burn down capitalism in the military industrial complex, the more mal- radical I become. I start saying shit like, oh my, I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't advocate against violence. Like these things I would never say when I was a teenager, but now as I got older, as I see the harsh reality of our system, I got more radical like many people my age. Gentlemen, yeah. all, all, all I can say in regards towards this entire system that we are seeing. Um, this empire of ours, this republic that we hold dear, uh, in theory, in theory, bear with me, is going through the death throes of its final years. And we are seeing a population being ignored. We're seeing systems and infrastructure fall apart. So while Kyle is comfortable living his best life close to the establishment, he can easily say stuff like this. But to our entire viewing audience right here, right now, tell us. I mean, again, we we read your comments. We see what's happening. When I start this show in the morning, Hard Lens Media in the morning, all I'm seeing in the chat is, oh, it's pretty tough out there. I don't know how I'm going to make it past tomorrow. Right. I'm trying to take care of my family. I'm trying to take care of my relatives. My family is struggling. It is the same story across the board, across the political spectrum. That's going from conservative voters to liberals, communists, socialists. It doesn't matter where you're at. Every single goddamn American knows when you see smug bastards like this, they don't know what it's like, whether or not they will have a roof over their head or food in their stomach or medicine to take care of themselves or their loved ones. So Kyle could easily dismiss a third party. I embrace a third party and I embrace the need for there to be another option for voters to vote on. And I'll be goddamn if some vote blue, no matter who person starts wagging their finger in front of us, starts telling us, oh, you got to vote for Biden because Trump. Why? Nothing changed. Let's get to this next video here or this next clip, because I do want to get I know, uh, uh, Keaton, you said start at the seven mark. And that's what we did in the intro. But I got to get you guys' reaction to this maybe 30-second clip right here. Let's listen. So, look. All right, let's hear it. I'll say again what I said the other day. Um, now we have a situation where you can vote for Marianne Williamson in a Democratic primary. Ugh. Uh, and then Dang. if you live in a swing state and it's the general election and you can't bring yourself to vote for Joe Biden, if he's the nominee against uh, the other Republicans, right? Why? Well, why? At least you have a place now where you can do your protest. Why the caveat? In sw- well, this is exactly it. So I actually misquoted him on last night's show. I said he said he's voting for Biden this time. Kyle lives in New York. So Kyle's saying I'll vote for Cornell in New York. But <laughs> right, he's putting right. the caveat in there that if you he's live in a swing state, you should vote for Biden. And he's actually said... If I lived in a swing state this year, I would vote for Biden, pledging his support for Biden a year and a half out, which is more than he did last time. And so my point from last night's show, even though I did technically misspeak there, 
uh, still stands, which is how on earth could you be more committed to Biden this time than last time? Like, I understand <laughs> if you're a Democrat, if you're just a blue MAGA Democrat, you're going to vote for Biden both times. OK, fine. But if you were on the fence in 2020, how the fuck uh, could you be more convinced that Biden's your guy in 2024 than last time? What were you? What were you? Were you holding out for World War Three? Is that your thing? <laughs> is that like, are you glad? Yeah, that shows that, how God. that we're in World War Three. Like, is World War Three a positive? Did he close the deal with World War Three? It's amazing. It's and I know I, I, I don't mean to disrupt the flow of things, but that point he made in that last clip, too, about mm. the best way to put ideas out there, the best way to get the message out there is to run as a Democrat. That just completely ignores the reality of the last seven years. Bernie got 47 percent of the vote in, in 2016 in the Democratic primary. And as Nick, you have said in the past, and you're right, his ideas are worse off now than they were then. Why? Because he entrusted his movement to the to the DNC mm -hmm. and they killed him. Right. Yeah. And so, I mean, it's just it's just completely them. ignorant of reality. It's, it's unbelievable. Yeah, it's astounding. It took yeah, a lot of I'm discipline glad, not for us to cover it last night. Yeah, I'm, I'm, glad that you, uh, <laughs> I'm glad that you mentioned that, Keaton, because that was the point I was going to bring up, because in his first clip, the mental gymnastics that he was doing uh, to justify running as a Democrat was incredible. It's completely illogical. You know, just like the, the story we're going to cover with Peter Hotez where the, the COVIDians can't defend their position. In the same way, these people have no intellectual thought process. Like, for example, what he said, he said, if you run as a Democrat, you can actually get things done. Like, you actually get things done. No, you uh, can't. What, what, what do you mean by that? Like, in the first clip, that's what he said. He said, you actually can get something done, run as a Democrat. What is something? What is that thing you're talking about? Because as you point out, Keaton, when, ever since the Bernie movement, ever since we had multiple Democrats take over the Democrat Party, the Democrat Party has shifted to the right. They, they're right. funding ICE to record levels. They're funding the police more. They are funding the military industrial complex to record levels, more fracking, more public drilling. Ever since this strategy of the Justice Democrats, the Democrat Party has shifted to the right. Exactly. So when you say they're valuing and as a Democrat because you can get something, that is ahistorical. Right. Right. And you know that because you've been following politics for, what, 15 years? It's like, so this is him being an unbelievably ranked partisan Class loyal clown. That's what this is. Not only and he pretends cool. as if right. Marianne Williamson is better. Like, oh yeah, like, like, oh Cornell, he's okay. He's okay. He's, okay. <laughs> he's, he's all right. He's all right. <laughs> but but Marianne, we got Marianne. You get understand? It's like it almost like you like he doesn't understand just comparing the two and pretending that Marianne is better. It always it already takes the legs out of your argument because nobody on this earth except for the two that got married by her believes that no no one believes that Marianne <laughs> no Williamson believes. is close to Cor Cornell West and he says he always says this in his video he says yeah I agree with Cornell like 90 95 percent you can't agree with Cornell 99 90 95 percent and agree with Marianne Williamson 90 90 percent because right. that means well, well, uh you're, you're it's the only five percent is Israel. Is that what you're saying? Because there's a lot more. Yeah, show how much he cares yeah. about those. Well, that, well, that, well, that, he cares about those issues. But go ahead, Russell. Well, I was like uh, Crystal in the car. She was like Mrs. Howell on Gilligan's Island. He's always been a hero of mine. <laughs> 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 and that, that's that's who these people are. When he's talking about, uh, you know, this is how you get a platform. He's he's joined that social class. Mm -hmm. I mean, this is why they're all gravitating around Marianne. Look, for a bunch of politics nerds from the East Coast, I'm sure this is very glamorous for them to hang out with someone like Marianne Williamson. And who knows the people that she knows in Hollywood that she hooks them up with. This is getting to join that class that we've always had in L.A. and in New York of very rich people who like to pretend that they're more virtuous than other members of their class because they talk shit about policies that they don't really give a fuck about. And they're yeah. never prepared to jeopardize yeah. their social position by actually advocating for in a meaningful way. That's it's almost like charity. Is. It's almost like charity where you're, yeah, you want the credit and you want to feel like you're doing something to make yourself, but it's never really enough to get people out of a certain position. And that's the same thing that you, you are right. sort of speaking to where it's like, it's like the reason, and I don't want to name some of the people because some of the people that will fall into this category, are, quite frankly, are friendly with this network, but the same that like they want, it's like 
they feel this almighty because they are in this class and they see other people in this class have such disdain. They feel like, well, I don't have disdain. At least I'm able to talk to these people and imbue these policies that would help them. So that makes me some sort of like better. But if you're not able, if you're not, if you're unwilling to fight for it, this is my argument. How does that make you better? Because what's the material difference in a person who says, I'm, I'm against Medicare for all, like RFK Jr.? What's the material difference in that? And Marianne Williamson, who says, I want it, but I'm going to rub two sticks together to get it. What's right. the difference? <laughs> the strategy means you're not really trying to get it. And that's the point in running with the Democratic Party. I think Kit was going to uh, uh, chime in. Go ahead. Well, well the thing is, remember, uh, when Dr. Cornell West was with the People's Party, what was all of his critics saying? Oh, he'd be more serious if he ran with the Greens. Uh, now he's with uh, the Green Party, and now right. automatically he's uh, still being dismissed. You know what that tells me? That adds more fuel to my fire in indicating that people like Kyle Kalinske and all these critics against third parties were never serious from 2016 exactly. and onwards. They never believed in the goddamn words that they said because if they really wanted to cause a difference, they would have done something. They would have fought. Now, right. look, Justice Democrats, who was it created by? Jank Uger? And Kyle Kalinske. Now Justice Democrats is on point, just like our revolution and brand new Congress on point with the Democratic establishment to support Joe Biden. You have all these unions, all these groups that were with Bernie Sanders now surrounding themselves with somebody who made sure nothing would fundamentally change even after Trump was removed from office. And we have the architect, the main guy, Joe Biden, who is against the workers movement. Anything to uplift working class citizens, no matter what the color of your skin is. Joe Biden has been with the establishment and his select ruling elite. So when I hear somebody like Kyle Kalinske dismiss a third party vote, that should give all of you the extra confidence and conviction in realizing that anyone that's going to tell you to support Biden, they're just telling you, hey, support this guy so that my life is better. That's well, who these vote blue no matter yeah, you, who you, you are. Go ahead. You, uh, go you, ahead. You want to you want to funny and I'll pass it to you, Russell. The, the funny thing is that these people was caught, they was busted. And this is why I was so excited when Cornell West turned Green Party. Do you remember yeah. what Kyle Kalinske <laughs> and these people said? But they they was they were trying to be sneaky right. and trying yeah. to pretend they were oh, right. We they, yeah. they were saying that man, it would make more sense if Dr. Cornell West run as a Democrat and as a Green. Now they included both. Because they know how bad it will look if they said that he should run only as a Democrat. And they only mm-hmm. said that because they didn't think that Dr. Cornell West would switch his parties like that. So when they didn't think he was going to switch, it was easy to say, yo, man, he should run as a Green Party and as a Democrat. Then when he ran as a Green, that forced Kyle Kalinske hand and many others to finally admit that their objection was not that he, they, he ran as a People Party. Which, member, CJ, right. what did I say? CJ, I told you guys on this show, yeah, all the right. bullshit things they were saying about the People's Party... Well, they did not give a fuck about any of that. RB, yeah. we had a, a, a legitimate critique of the people party, and we are consistent. But the people that came out, like, I got concerns over the people party. You don't even know what the fuck is going on. You wasn't, you know, you haven't been involved in this discourse. You don't know what the hell is going on. You just saying that to shield from the fact that you're against third parties. So then we switched. They had to, they, they, they were forced to admit it. It's like Nathan J. Robinson. And I'm gonna show this tweet. I'm, I'm sorry, Russ. I'll pass it to you after this because Glenn nails this on the head here. And this is why I, I grimace when they like, yeah, if I'm in a blue state and I'm in a safe space, then right. I'll vote third party. What's the fucking point of that? Now, now look at this. This is what Glenn Greenwald said. I can't say it better than him. And I passed to you, Russ, this. He said, because uh, this is what Nathan J. Robinson said. This is the same uh, class of leftists of Kyle Kalinske. Yeah. He's a union buster, the same way that Kyle Kalinske is rich and he became class loyal. Look at what happens when you become rich business owner who become a, a, a union buster as well. This is Nathan J. Robinson. He said, I'll vote for West because I live in a red state. If I live in a swing state, I'll vote for Biden. This is the, the argument come from Social Democrats to Jacob been left and these weak ass class loyal. Honestly, the, the progressives at Palatine, the NATO left, did the same fucking thing, right? So this is what Glenn said. He said, I think it's funny when online left liberals admit that the only type of dissent or disobedience to the Democratic Party that is permitted is when it's completely inconsequential. When does nothing, when, when Kyle Kalinske is saying, when it means fucking nothing in terms of challenging his power, then he steps up, right? The same way Crystal Ball said, she liked the idea of a third party, but she's not going to be on board unless that motherfucker about to win. 
They are so they have no word. I, I finished a tweet. He said they it's only permitted when it's completely unconsequential and theatrical, a pointless pose, an empty gesture. When obedience is needed, you will give it. Cal Kalinsky and Crystal Ball. I, and I just, I just want to add in add in something in here too, as well. Uh, for all these channels that rose in the prominence from 2016 and onwards, who rode on the Bernie Sanders train, what yep. they were doing is trying to uh, make everyone feel good by saying things that people wanted to hear. They never followed through with their consistency, and they never were able to really believe <laughs> or follow through with the messaging in regards to trying to change the system because all what they were doing was putting out content that people would click on and not give any solutions. And when – Finally, the Democratic Party, AOC and Bernie Sanders, were revealing their true colors, as quoting Jimmy Dore. Um, people said nothing because, oh, th these are our leaders. AOC and Bernie Sanders are flawed. They sold you out. They left you behind. They are comfortable. Kyle Kalinske is comfortable. The last thing they want any of you to do or any of their diehard supporters or subscribers to do is to think for yourself and actually fight for yourself. And what I will say is this. Vote how you feel like. Don't vote Democrat or Republican. I mean, obviously, you don't have a seat at the table, but you don't owe these parties, these politicians, or these pundits your support or your loyalty. Break away. Be free of it. We see what's happened under a Biden administration. Nothing has changed. And since nothing has changed, you owe them nothing. Things got worse. Uh, all when right. All, so, when you say it, it, like when you say, uh, and this not like, I know, kid, I know you know this, but when I'm just saying this in general, when people say nothing changed, that's actually letting Biden off the hook. Things got <laughs> worse. He, he doubled down <laughs> on all the Trump policy. ICE is stronger. The police are stronger, and the doomsday clock is closer than it's ever been to midnight. Russell, I know you want to chime in, brother. I, I all right. So, midnight. so um, I was a little insulted. <laughs> CJ <laughs> said I'm not long winded, so I'm gonna break, <laughs> I'm gonna break that streak here. <laughs> Um, As you can see, we're all long winded. <laughs> <laughs> so I think you got you got a couple things going on here. One, if you look at, I, I think I, I think with uh, like Jenk, he was he was always the Madonna of independent media, just bending mm -hmm. his image to whatever the trend was. When he when he thought he'd make money doing Howard Stern, he was he was sending Anna out to to hoe for shoes at a mall. You know, when he thought he could make money off the Bernie thing, he jumped on the Bernie thing. You look at people like Kyle, you look at some of these independents who I think started out sincere. It reminds me of, if you remember, there was the black communist in the movie Network, where at mm -hmm. first she agrees to do the show. That, that, that movie predicts reality television. She basically agrees to do this show where they're going to follow them around doing actions against banks. And she starts out using it as a platform. And by the end, she's screaming about her rating share. God damn it, my ratings are dropping, right? That's who she turns into. I think that's what happened with a lot of these people. Like, I don't think Kyle specifically, I don't think he started out thinking like that. I think he got the money. I think he got the money. Exactly. And he started thinking like, oh, man, I got to get a million ratings. That's I when I did. My class is everything. Well, that's it. That's well, everything, guys. And ahead, that's, that's the other side of it. You know, I often apply von Clausewitz's observation. There are no contradictions. When you think you found a contradiction, check your premises. So you look mm -hmm. at a lot of these people. You look at what Bernie Sanders did. And very often you only have to know one thing to understand everything. Bernie Sanders saying he doesn't want to end up like Nader. That is everything you need to know to understand every decision he has made in politics. When you look at these people, you apply that principle. There are no contradictions. Check your premises. Why are they doing this? What? Because in the end, they will not do anything that is going to threaten their class position. If you actually do things that are going to piss off the social set that they run in, there are consequences. That's why not one of them has gotten behind RFK. And we're not behind RFK either. No. But if you're into working in the Democratic Party, not one of them picked RFK. Why? <laughs> because RFK is verboten in their class. Whereas Marianne 
is fine. She's a, she's a guru. She wrote some self-help books. They were very helpful to me when I was going through a hard time. That's uh, okay. You back Marianne. I love Marianne. RFK. He's an anti-vaxxer. So I mean, we're gonna, can, can, you can chime in next. Sure. After Ken chime in, I'm going to show you guys. We can get to the Marion Williamson story. I think it, it, it yeah, it well. kind of feels right after here. After watching mm -hmm. Kyle Kalinske slob grover. Can we gonna, we're going to analyze what it means to have a 5% <laughs> disagreement. We're going to see what that means. Yeah. Go ahead and chime in. <laughs> no, just the political illiteracy of pledging your vote to Joe Biden 16 months out. These are a lot of the same people who get upset, uh, along with one other that uh, is fresh on our minds, I'm sure, uh, when you say that uh, they're not on the quote unquote real left. Um, how you not how you cannot see this conflict in Russia and Ukraine, how you cannot see the Ukraine war as a proxy, as a battle between capitalism and for the first time in decades, an ideological competitor to capitalism on the world stage. That's what this is. Now, it's not capitalism versus communism as it was in the Cold War, but it's capitalism versus something else. That's what this G7 versus BRICS is all about. That's what NATO versus the Global South is all about. So Nathan Robinson, who I'm sure considers himself a doctrinaire leftist, and I'm sure he would put his left bona fides up against anyone else, how you can be pledging your support to the nato candidate 16 months out i'm sorry yeah, it is make, make i'm sorry sense. to steal your phrase from you on your own show nick but deeply <laughs> unserious it is insane it is ridiculous it is ludicrous i made the stupid mistake of trying to explain this to jordan charitin when we had him on that was your first right mistake said right I tried to explain that. I said, don't you understand if you're on the left and you see a conflict, an ideological conflict between capitalism and its competitor, don't you understand how that should be important <laughs> to you? Yeah. And apparently to the Marianne stands, it's not important at all, since as we're going to see in a few minutes, I think, uh, on that Kim Iverson interview, just an astoundingly idiotic answer on that question. And yeah, yet here you got Nathan Robinson. Oh, yeah, no, I'll vote for Biden. If, if you're in a swing state, vote Biden. Robinson... Kyle, right? To Jordan's credit, uh, he is not telling people anything on that score yet. Um, Humanist but, Report, I mean, come on. Humanist come Report on. said the same thing, too. On uh, yeah. the leftist mafia, he said, make sure if it's a safe state, I'm in Oregon. I'm uh, in a safe state. Right, exactly, exactly. Oh, right. That's it's all it's the same shit. Yeah. Fucking cry. Okay, that, first those, all, are, those guys sorry. are five minutes away from getting a contract to be on MSNBC. Yes. Well, as, as a third-party activist, and Kay, I passed to you, I know you, you run and go. As a third-party yeah. activist, I want to be fucking blamed for why Joe Biden Of course. Loses. <laughs> of course. He's like, I don't want to be blamed. What kind of <laughs> yes. Loving pussies are this, but go ahead, kid. Well, for, uh, again, I want to just piggyback real quick on it. I, again, I welcome the hatred of saying, oh, it's hard lens media's fault for telling people to vote third party. Oh, it's due dissidents. It's RBN's fault. I'm glad. I'm glad that people will vilify us. And another thing, too, with this quote unquote leftist mafia. Hey, leftist mafia, uh, you know, I know you guys talked about that Illuminati person, but seriously, you know, if you all are going to get onto that the whole idea of getting MSNBC contracts, I mean, maybe uh... work on fixing your imagery just a little bit better because you guys look a little bit scummy. Just so Throwing it out there with those quote unquote leftist and but what a dumb name leftist mafia. Leftist mafia. Yeah. <laughs> what? We 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 we're gonna put a mob together. We are gonna put a mafia together. Make sure Joe Biden get elected. <laughs> oh yeah, hey, uh, way to yeah, hit those man. home run hunt. Uh, the, the right the right wingers are crossing the street when they see you guys coming. <laughs> yeah, right, exactly. Yeah. Maybe they are mafia because they want to go to war with Russia. <laughs> Maybe yeah. they're mafia because they're leftists that want to go to war. <laughs> That's a part yeah, of war. Yeah, it's ridiculous. Um, but go ahead, Nick. You can uh, bring in the next one. If the you last want. thing on the Marianne Wilson thing, and this is what the absolutely insane thing to show how it touched Cal Kalinske and Marianne Wilson fans and RFK fans are when they say stuff like, man, this is how your candidacy would be treated seriously. This is how you can actually create change. And in order to have a position, you have to ignore data. Ignore data. Where 40% of, of Americans in YouGov poll, 44% to be specific, said they are ready to vote for a third party. So they say things that, and then they don't back it up. Like, I'll show you guys receipts. I'll give you guys uh, stats because I assume you guys are not just going to believe anything I say. 
but they are so arrogant, smug. Like, I'm just I'm white, rich, and wealthy, so you got to listen to me because I have authority. So they don't have to back up anything they say. Everything they say is anti-factual, and that's why it really eats me that these people got fucking hundreds of times more people watching them than us. Well, 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 yeah, people yeah. like, Arbin, why you cover these people? Because they got way more fucking people <laughs> watching their dumb ass. Way more. Every what? time we do these video, people are like, man, I like Cal. I, I, you guys are fucking rough. I never heard that before. That's the point. We try to wake up. <laughs> exactly. These morons who think they have anything to say. Well, Russ, you, I know you, time to go ahead. Yeah, you, you notice that you know, none of us are supporting efforts within the Democratic Party. Mm -hmm. But there is only Never. one person that I have seen yeah. in <laughs> any interview with anyone who has behaved the way that Marianne behaved on your show, on any show. And that's fucking Marianne on your show. I have never seen RFK behave that way. I don't think you're ever going to see Cornell West behave mm -hmm. that way. And yet huh? none, none of her foot rubbers have once asked her about 30 years of reporting on her being dangerously unstable behind the scenes. Not even to ask it, not even to ask it. Not one yeah. person ever asked that question. Yeah. Like that's an out of line. Like a set the record that. straight. It could have been positive. Like Marianne, this is ridiculous. We want to set the record straight. It could have been like that. It doesn't have to right. be like adversarial. Go ahead. It's, it's, it's not just, like I just one just, hit piece, 30 years of reporting on this. Plus, you have the way she behaved on your show. You have the yeah. way she behaved in that town hall in South Carolina where she yeah. has, you know, like five people and two of them are the wait staff. And she fucking attacks one of those people. <laughs> and so doesn't that lend some credibility to these stories that she knows oh. she's running for president and she can't, no matter what you think, no matter how you feel in that moment, that she couldn't control her emotions on camera. Doesn't that suggest that behind the scenes she's worse? If she's well, acting like that when she knows she's on camera, actually, even oh. even behind the scenes, when I interviewed Marcel Dixon, uh, he uh, he went to detail my interview that I had with him uh, that he went to speak to Marianne Williamson one on one. And this is from his own account. And it's on Hard Lens Media on our YouTube channel. Um, his her staff was apologetic. And when he went to talk to her again, she was all, why are you here? <laughs> I mean, I, I, again, 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 I'm, yeah, I'm doing a disservice. Energy. Yeah, yeah. I, again, it, 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 I'm doing a disservice because, again, Marcel Dixon goes into detail about really how hostile she was. But, I mean, if there's a treasure trove of statements about Marianne Williamson being unstable or hostile to people or things not going her way, well, then, Jesus Christ, why are you running for the nomination? If anything, uh, you know, it, it tells me that she's building up a, a quasi Bernie Sanders movement to try and get people books. to support the Biden or yeah, or to buy books or or, no, or for RK and Marion Wilson selling books. And you guys out of your goddamn mind if you think that's not the case. They plug their books all the goddamn time. That is what this is about. That's why they're going to endorse Joe Biden at the end. That's why they signed that contract. That's why they run the Democrat Party because they don't want to upset the bourgeoisie. They want to sell the books to. 